Hey, who wants to come over for dinner? We have plenty of food. Grab whatever you like. Now, I can't guarantee that it's not expired, but hey, take as much as you want. Now it's time to get back into this kitchen and finish our spring cleaning in this room. And we've done a lot in here. We've cleaned it up, we decluttered a lot of things, but there's still something that we need to declutter and that is the pantry. My hubby made this for me back in 2018. And though I love it and it stores all the food, there's so much stuff in here that I don't even know what is in here anymore. It's kind of become a hoarded hot mess. It's disorganized. And it's time to get in here, declutter it, pull everything out of it, and organize it so that I know what we have to make it easier for cooking and sending snacks to school. And I have to admit, I'm a little intimidated by organizing all of this, cause look, I'm a hoarder recovering in her hoarding disorder. I've gotten good at decluttering, but I'm still learning how to organize. I'm still putting these skills into place, but that's okay. We're just gonna dive right in because the first thing I noticed is that I have multiples of things that we eat a lot. And I just go to the store and just pick it up without realizing that I already have it at home. So that's why it's important to just try and start to organize. And I have a feeling I'm gonna be finding a lot of expired food because this expired in 2019. And even over here, this applesauce, it's not even that yellowy color, it's like a brownish color because it expired in 2018. And by going through everything, it is also making me aware of, man, we eat a lot of junk food, don't we? <laughs> There's some healthy things that's mixed in with all of the chips, but it's something to be mindful of because right now we're focusing on decluttering it and as I go shopping in the future, I'll have to make sure that I add a little more healthier options for us to choose from. And now we're making some progress as we emptied out this side of the pantry, but now, we gotta start working on here, right? It's all about just taking the next step. Once you take the first step, you can easily start to the next step. And something that I'm starting to realize also is that I think the pandemic may have triggered some of this. Remember last year when there was like no food on the shelves and it was kind of scary? Well, whenever there was an opportunity, I would grab pasta and sauce because it lasted a really long time. So I think subconsciously, I kind of hoarded away a lot more food last year than I ever did before because I felt the need to hold on to it in case the supermarkets were empty because we never experienced that before. We never experienced empty shelves in the supermarket. We've just taken for granted that there was always food available to us. And that's why some people struggle with hoarding disorder because it's our coping mechanism for our fears, our anxiety, our depression. It's how we're able to function. But actually there are ways to heal from that vice and start to have healthier coping mechanisms to deal with those emotions. And we finally pulled everything out of that pantry cabinet, laid it all out Kamari style on the floor. That way I can get a visual of what we have. And man, do we have a lot of it. <laughs> That is an overwhelming amount of food for a family of four. And it just emphasizes the need to have it organized. Now, this is going to be part of the video where I do it a little differently than Marie Kondo. I don't start picking out what sparks joy because with hoarding, a lot of things spark joy for me. No, I have to start with what doesn't spark joy? What can I declutter easily? That way I can get that decluttering momentum going. And when it comes to food, I can easily start to let go of things that are expired 
things that are stale, things that I know we're not going to eat because I just struggle with hoarding disorder and not squalling disorder. Squalling disorder is a little different. Those are the people who hold on to the rotting food, their dirty diapers, the blatant trash. Now, I don't have that. That is a separate disorder. The show Hoarders always shows you level five hoarders with squalling disorder. Now, on that note, everyone who has squalling disorder also has hoarding disorder, but not everyone who has hoarding disorder, like myself, has squalor disorder. And that's why letting go of the expired or even rotting food is very easy for me to let go of. All right, so I'm pausing because I'm feeling a lot of emotions right now. What I'm really feeling is a lot of guilt, like a lot of guilt. Um, I'm throwing away, it feels like more than half of this food because it's expired, we didn't use it, it's stale, and it's because I didn't organize it and it just feels really guilty right now and I'm trying to change my energy around because I feel I'm getting that ashamed feeling like showing you guys, God, look at all this food that was wasted. There's people starving that I could have used that money and bought that food to give a family a meal, but instead my disorganized brain just let it rot in the pantry and I don't want to feel like that. I need to turn this energy around so that it's becoming positive again. And I think what I'm going to do is um, every month, <laughs> every month I like to donate to a charity and um, using my Google ad revenue. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe I'll make like a hundred dollar donation to the, like the local food pantry. That way at least I can make this and turn this around into like a positive thing again. So over here is the food that we are keeping. It's still good. It's not stale. We'll eat it. So I have to organize it so that we can make family meals out of it. Now this over here, this big pile is the tossy, tossy pile. This is what is getting decluttered this episode. And a lot of it is expired, but some of it is still good. I just know that we're not going to eat it. So I'm going to make sure that I donate it and bless somebody else with this food. Now that the pile of what we're keeping was a lot smaller, it was a lot easier for me to start to visualize how am I going to categorize this? Now, I went to Bed Bath & Beyond with my 20% coupons, but I was still a little shocked on how expensive pantry organizational bins are, even with my coupons. So I only picked out a few pieces. And the rest, I just used some hoarded organizational pieces that I had squirreled away. And these were actually from Dollar Tree, and I'm glad that I picked them up when I did. And now it's time to give these shelves a really good wipe down. They are very deep. And I remember one of my amazing subscribers had suggested you really should install pull out drawers in your pantry, which is a wonderful idea. But unfortunately, hubby's been working so much overtime that he didn't have time to do it. So we're gonna to have to work with what we have. Now these bins right here, they are 16 inches. Here is the basket that we got from Target. Now it has that Y hook and I really want to label it. So what I decided to do was I decided to go into the laundry room and grab stuff that I had. I already had this twine. That was from Dollar Tree. I also already have a glue gun. And in this basket up here, I had had labels that I had bought from Michaels before. So since my label maker stickers isn't going to stick to that Y basket, this was the best way I could think of labeling it. So what I did was I took a piece of that twine and I was going to hot glue it to the back of my cardboard label. That way I can thread it through the basket, tie it in the back, that way it looks nice and clean and labeled so I know what food goes in there. 
And now that there is a lot less stuff, it's so much easier to categorize and organize it. And I did stick with pretty basic neutral clear and white and gray bins. And because it was so deep, I had to double up on some of the bins. That way I can use more of the space and pull it out a lot easier. So I did end up buying three of the containers from Bed Bath & Beyond, one big one to store the flour, and then two smaller ones to store sugar and brown sugar. That way they stay fresh longer. And I also have my own label maker that I bought last month. I had to return my friend's label maker. And I know this will be a really good investment because now that we have decluttered so much that we're in the organizing stage, I get to label everything and it does look so much better once everything is labeled. And now it's the moment of truth. Can somebody recovering in their hoarding disorder be organized? And the answer is yes. Doesn't that look so much better? This is such an improvement on what it used to look like. Up here I have dry foods and behind it I have pasta. Now I labeled it to what was in front on the top and what was in the back on the bottom. That way I knew what was in the containers. This over here, of course we have cans and soup, fruits and nuts and condiments. And I love how this turned out. On the bottom, I organized the snacks and the chips like this because this bar that's in the middle kind of takes a lot of room. So I put the smaller chip basket in the back and over here is where I have snacks like crackers and cookies and granola. On this side, this is all the baking stuff. I have a lot of baking ingredients and now it's all together so that I can clearly see it. And I wanted to show you how easy these bins slide out. That way you can get to the stuff in the back. It's a great temporary fix until hubby can install those drawers because organizing is always evolving. It's always changing. It's always figuring out, hey, how can we make this a little better? But overall, I absolutely love how this came out and it's 100% better than what it used to be.